Hi guys, it's Sterling Inspector here. In today's video, I'm going to be going in depth into one of my favorite graphics cards on the market, and this is the 1080 Ti. Before we get into that, I just want to say if you guys are having any problems, I've set up a Discord so you can put your questions in there. I'll try my best to answer them. The link for the Discord is in the description. So this might be a bit of an odd video, but I want to highlight why I think that the 1080 Ti is still one of the best cards you can get in today's market. This goes for both mining and gaming. So the 1080 Ti was released close to over five years ago, back in March of 2017. With the rate of technology expansion, you would think that by now this card would be obsolete compared to the cards of today. However, this isn't the case. This card has been one of the best cards and has stood the test of time. This is especially true when it comes to crypto mining. I've been buying and using these cards for ages and I think they are definitely one of my top three cards for mining. In this video, I'll be going over the hash rates, pricing and profitability of this card. So let's start this video with the hash rates for different coins and how much of the coins we can expect to mine. I'm going to go over to the most popular coins that have been most profitable right now. In this case, this would be Ethereum, Flux, Raven and Ergo. I'm also going to add Zero coin in because I made a video on that recently. I'm going to start with the Ethereum side. Now this is one of the best coins for the 1080 Ti and this is due to the introduction of the ETH enlargement pill which basically tweaked the memory on the 1080 Ti to produce a higher hash rate. So before the introduction of the memory tweak, the card would only produce around 32 mega hash. However, with the memory tweak applied, it gives us an average of 43 mega hash, which is 11 mega hash higher than the baseline hash rate. This memory tweak was major for this card as it boosts its hash rate dramatically to a point that it outperforms most of the 20 series cards, which is supposed to be better than the 1080. So on the ETH hash algorithm, we see around 43 mega hash with a power draw of 200 watts, thus giving us an efficiency of 215. When the efficiency is compared to other cards, it doesn't hold up as much, but it does produce a higher hash rate. I also want to note that the memory tweak also works for the 1080 and 1070 cards, but doesn't add a dramatic amount like the 1080 Ti. Now let's move on to Fluxcoin. The algorithm that this coin is mined on is Zellhash. So on Flux, this card tends to produce 52 to 56 souls per second, depending on which miner you're using. If you use G minor, then you get 52 souls, but if you use Mini Z minor, you get about 56 souls. I tend to stick with G minor as Mini Z usually gives a higher amount of stale shares, which in the long run mines less Flux. One of the best things about this card is on the Zellhash algorithm, it takes less power to get a higher amount of souls. As we can see, we get 52 souls, but only using 170 watts, which is 30 less than Ethereum. Therefore, it is much more efficient to mine flux than Ethereum. This gives us an efficiency of 305 souls per watt. Even when the efficiency is higher, flux sometimes doesn't bring in as much money as Ethereum, but we'll get into the profits of it later. The third and fourth coins are Ravencoin and Zerocoin, which both work on the same algorithm. So they basically have the same hash rates. The algorithm for Ravencoin is the Kapow algorithm and for Zero is ProgPow. So I've managed to push the hash rate to 23 mega hash per second with a draw of around 205 watts. So Ravencoin tends to draw a lot of power to mine coins. So therefore the miner doesn't actually display how much power is drawn from this mining coin. It shows an efficiency of 112, but it's probably more like 100 if measured at the wall. So the last coin is Ergo. This coin uses the auto Lycos algorithm. I tend not to mine Ergo as it's never been something that I've really got into. I don't know if I can be getting better results with this card. I managed to get the mega hash to around 87 mega hash with a power draw of 170 watts, thus giving us an efficiency of 511. So that's only what I've managed to get out of this card in regards to hash rates. And when compared to cards like the 2060, the 2070, and even the 2080, it does nearly outcompete them. Now let's head into how much coins you can mine in a day and calculate the profitability. Right now we are in a crypto slump in terms of profitability. So bearing in mind that these figures are slightly lower than normal. So Ethereum, we mine 0 0.0006 ETH per day which sells for 
Next we have Flux. We can mine 0.88 Flux per day, which sells for $1.31. Up next we have Ravencoin. We can mine 16 Ravencoin per day, which sells for $1.11. Second to last we have Coin, which we can mine 12 Zero per day, which sells for $1.27. And then lastly we have Ergo, and we can mine 0.24 Ergo per day, which sells for 0.83. So in order from most profitable to least profitable coin on this card, we have Ethereum, Flux, Zero, Raven, and Ergo. So right now isn't the best time to display profits due to the crash, but these 1080 Ti's were making around 170 a day back in November, December time, which in terms of profitability is pretty good. I also want to talk about the ROI of this card. So I've bought many of these cards and this is because they have a very early ROI compared to other cards on the market. Normally you could pick these up for around $400, but that has shot way up to $600. So the ROI might be different at this point in time. Just to put it into perspective, back in April of last year, I bought three of these and they had an ROI of around 200 days, which is around six months. Now compare that to when you look at many of these newer cards, which have ROIs of close to a year because they're so expensive. I think that this price range is not terrible because these cards are also great when it comes to performance in other things such as gaming or rendering. I personally use this card to edit and render all of my videos and it's very fast considering it's an older card. The fact that it's very good at doing other tasks helps to keep the resale price of the card at a good price. This in turn could help us when it comes time to sell and will still be reasonably priced. Right now we know that GPU prices are very high. And it'd be absurd to pay these prices, but people still continue to buy aftermarket prices. If you guys can get one of these for $400 to $500, then that would be a good price in my eyes. Lastly, the one downside that this card has is it's very power hungry and can take around 200 watts per card when mining. Most older cards only take one 8-pin connector. However, to power this, you need a 6-pin and an 8-pin, which means you also need to buy more PSUs to accommodate this for a rig. Overall, I think this is one of my top three cards that I've bought and a good majority of my rigs have these cards. I started out with a 1650 card when I was mining and my second card was a 1080 Ti. And I've been using them for a long time now. So if you're looking into what cards to buy, I would definitely go with a 1080 Ti if you can get it at the right price. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and comment your thoughts below.